Carl Jung became very fond of being embarrassed. And I understand that more and more as I understand myself more and more. Then we have Hunter S. Thompson, who did a lot of substances and would say things like, I could see myself behaving in these terrible ways, but there was nothing I could do about it. It was like watching myself from somewhere else. And I think that's the same thing that Carl Jung was experiencing with being embarrassed. I can only speak for myself, of course, but it's fun things like watching myself get nervous for no good reason, like when I'm going to speak to uh, my boss or something to that effect. And there's no reason for it. The, I know that it doesn't make any sense. I don't really technically feel that anxiety, but I can see myself behaving in that anxious way. Or one of the things that I must say that I've come to love in life is getting crushes. And it's fun because you can watch yourself around that person that you have a crush on and you're like thinking, I'm better than this. I, I have better words than this. I have better style than this. But around that person that you have a crush on, you're just a complete idiot and you're acting a fool and you can't speak. And I've actually come to love that. The, the Whether or not you do anything about the crush thing is an entirely different subject, but the fact of having the crush and watching yourself behave in this manner and going, wow, is that me? Like, I don't, I don't even understand what's happening here. It's kind of fun to see yourself behaving as somebody else, to be outside of yourself watching what's going on in these situations, whether it be anxiety or the love hormones or whatever you have going inside of you, you can recognize that as a version of you, but not necessarily you. And you can just have fun being that way and watching what happens.